in the previous video we talked about uh, how we can create multiple uh, multiple experiments to compare different scenarios for our subway restaurant and um, one thing that I would like to add here is that we could also look at the smore plots so for example for my first scenario that I uh, where I have two units of capacity on on the first two stages I can go to my experiment and uh, response results and look at the SMORE plots and particularly I would like to look at the SMORE plot for bulking percentage and uh, in order to compare my SMORE plot with the um, original model um, I need to go back to the experiment uh, for the original model and then go to the um, corresponding uh, SMORE plot for the bulking, uh, bulking percentage in the original model and as you can see the problem is that we really cannot uh, make a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison which is what we would really like to do here uh, to compare uh, different scenarios so I can switch back and forth between the two uh, experiments but, I'm, but, but I can't make a side-by-side -side comparison when I have uh, separate experiments for, for different scenarios So let me go back to my slides and talk about referenced properties. So a referenced property is used to specify the value for an object property, just like any other property that we have in our model. Um, however, they have a specific functionality which allows us to uh, facilitate experimentation with multiple scenarios all in one experiment. So in particular, if we set a reference property to appear as what we call a control in our experiment then as you can see in this figure we will be able to uh, run multiple scenarios in one experiment and perform um, comparisons uh, or simultaneous comparisons so as you can see in this figure I have uh, the capacity of the server set as reference properties and also as controls in my experiment so I can easily uh, change the capacity so for example in my scenario one I have one unit of capacity at bread uh, two in the oven uh, two at veggies one at cashier and one at drink uh, machine and um, and I have defined multiple scenarios by changing the capacity levels so when I run an experiment like this, I basically run all these scenarios simultaneously and I will be able to compare the results uh, without having to define multiple experiments. And we will talk about this and how we can set reference properties and use controls and perform side-by-side -side comparisons uh, shortly. So now let's go back to our model and see how we can set up reference properties. So before I show you how to set a reference property, I would like to go to, I have my model selected here, and I would like to go to definitions and the properties of my model. Um, and as you can see, we have the uh, built-in properties for our model uh, in, the, in the properties tab, but we don't have any user-defined properties in our model yet. So um, now what I would like to do is to define reference properties for the capacity of my of my five servers so what I'm going to do is to select the first stage and then um, instead of specifying the value directly in the uh, properties window of, of of the first server I can simply right click on the initial capacity um, property and go to set referenced property and you can see all different options that Simio gives me but what I would really like to do is defining a, a new um, a new reference property so I'm just going to click on create a new reference property and I can give it an, uh, a name so I'm just going to call it uh, breadth capacity and say OK so now when this little green arrow appears it means that we're using a reference property to set the value of of the initial capacity property of this um, of this server now if I go to uh, my model definitions and properties now you can see that we have this user-defined property that appears 
um, in the in the properties tab which is our bread capacity and if I click on it you will see that the initial value or the default value is set to 2 so we can modify this so let's um, let's set it to 1 so now uh, when I go back to my model this this uh, uh, value refers to the value that I set for my reference property. So my capacity of the server will be one if I run the model. So I can go ahead and run my model. And as you can see, uh, I only have a capacity of one because I'm referring to to my to my reference property to to know what the initial capacity of this server is. Also, if I click on the facility view, you will see the uh, properties of the model and if I click on the general under the controls uh, category you will see that a reference property appears in in our as a property of our model so we can I can also st uh, stop the model and change our breadth capacity let's say to 2 and now instead of changing the capacity in, uh, directly in the object from the object properties I can change it directly from the from the model property and if I run my model now you can see that we have a capacity of two on, on the first on the first server so uh, this is a really nice feature because we can simply uh, modify different reference properties in our model and run our model in the interactive mode and see uh, how the model behaves so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to define reference properties for my other servers. So I'm just going to select my oven and set a reference property for my oven capacity. So again, uh, create a new reference property, oven capacity. That's the name I would like to give to this reference property. Say OK. And again, you will see this little green arrow. Um, let me go ahead and define reference properties for my other servers. So set the reference property for the veggies, uh, veggies capacity. Okay. Select cashier, initial capacity, right click, create new reference property, cashier capacity. And finally, my drink machine, set reference property create new reference property and drink capacity. So now if I go to my model properties you will see that I have all my reference properties listed uh, here and I can set their default values. I'm going to default all of them to um, to one and for for the rest of them we should have one already. That's right. So now if I go to my facility view click uh, on my model you will see that uh, we have all our reference properties listed here so I can modify them so let's say I want to have two for the first two stages and I can run my model and basically see how the model behaves and um, as it runs and as you can see we uh, see a maximum of two model entities in the first two stages because we set the capacities of these two stages to two. So as you can see this makes it really easy for us to modify different properties of our model um, to to run um, different scenarios in the interactive mode. Also note that whenever you set the value of a reference property to a value other than its default value um, it will appear um, as a bold font in, in the properties uh, of the model. So as you can see the ones appear in a regular font and the twos that I have appear as, uh, as a bold uh, font. So also let me go back to my uh, experiment and now when I go to the experiment you will see that not only we have the previous uh, components that we had before, but now we have a new set of components under the controls category, which are basically our reference, uh, our reference properties. So as you can see, uh, in fact, this is the original uh, 
scenario that we ran, our first scenario, uh, having first two uh, uh, servers with uh, two units of capacity and the rest have one unit of uh, capacity. And um, this is a nice feature because it allows me to, to define multiple scenarios in the same in the same experiment. So now I can click on this little box here and create a, another scenario and then set my the uh, my parameter config my parameters however uh, I want them to be. So for example, let's say in the second scenario I want my breadth capacity to be 2. I will leave my oven capacity at 1 and my veggies capacity to 2. So I can also go ahead and define other scenarios. Now this time I will set the first one to 2 and uh, cashier to 2. And the fourth one I can set the first and the last uh, stations to have uh, two units of capacity. And of course I can go ahead and define uh, my other uh, scenarios here, which is what I'm going to do next. So here I have listed all my 10 scenarios or 10 parameter configurations um, using reference properties and before I run this experiment I would like to show you one other thing um, in fact if we go to model uh, definitions properties we can set which reference property we would like to appear as control in in our experiment so let's say I don't need the first reference property breadth capacity to appear as a control in my in my experiment I can simply um, select breadth capacity and under the general category properties um, set the visible uh, property to false and again as you can see it appears as, uh, in, a, in a bold uh, font so uh, that means I've changed it from the default value so if I now go to my experiment which I have renamed by the way to current policy with reference properties you can see that uh, now I only have four controls in my experiment so basically I uh, said to me that I don't need the uh, breadth capacity to appear as um, uh, as a control in my experiment. So let me go back and actually uh, redo or undo what I just did because I need it in my um, experiment. So now it again appears in my in my experiment. Now I'm going to um, click run and you will see that all my 10 scenarios will run simultaneously and we will be able to compare the results as, uh, as, as the experiments are running for these different parameter configurations. Now um, in the next video we will look at how we can um, analyze the results of an experiment like this uh, by looking at the side-by-side -side s'more plots that Simeo generates.